Okay, uh, so we'll uh, let's recall that last time we were looking at vestigial sideband modulation. We'll continue with that uh, discussion today for some time and uh, try to wind that up. And in the rest of the time, I'll introduce a, the concept of what is called a super heterodyne receiver for amplitude modulation systems, okay, which will answer a number of questions that have been raised from time to time about tunability etcetera of the receiver right. So, we will look at these two issues today. Uh, to recollect our discussion on vestigial sideband modulation, we said that it is useful to have a sideband filtering mechanism in which we do not try to cut off one of the sidebands completely, but permit a portion of the other sideband to be also transmitted. Basically, it simplifies our filtering problem, right. We are able to, uh, do, we, we are able to work with filters which are more practical, which have a, uh, which have a, the, the requirement of having a gradual roll off rather than a sudden cut off, right. Whether you want a high pass filter or a low pass filter, depending on whether you want to transmit the upper sideband or the lower sideband, we need to uh, do this right. However, if you want this feature, we need to make sure that this filter would produce a signal which would lead to perfect demodulation of your transmitted signal, perfect recovery of the message signal right. So, when we impose this constraint, we found that this gradual roll off filter which leads to vestigial sideband modulation must satisfy a certain constraint right. And the constraint we derived was this equation that the filter H f which is the sideband filtering filter vestigial sideband filtering filter must satisfy the condition that H f minus F c plus H f plus F c must be equal to 1 right. This constant 1 of course is arbitrary it could be any other constant main thing is it is a constant value. Now, to understand what this means, let us look at the picture. Let us say we are talking about the high pass filter to take the upper sideband, right. This would have been your ideal sideband, uh, upper sideband filter. The VSB filter, on the other hand, so this we are plotting H of F assuming it to be real or you consider this to be mod of H of F. For the VSB filter, we had permitted that this at the cutoff around the cutoff frequency have a gradual roll off right. So, the transfer function looks something like that right and basically what we are saying is that this, this transfer function should have a shape which satisfies this condition. When it satisfies this condition, we are a, a coherent detector would be able to perfectly recover the message signal empty back, right. right this is what we discussed. Let us see what this means this constraint means on the filter transfer function can you uh, guess what it would mean it is a kind of symmetry that is implied here right. What uh, what uh, if you for example, look at this condition carefully uh, this is basically saying that if I fold this portion of the roll off back into this region right. Then of this fold uh, if I take a mirror image of this around this point right. Then if I add up these two curves they should turn out to be a flat curve a constant curve right. So, there is a kind of symmetry involved around F c and this kind of symmetry that you are, that you want the filter to have is called vestigial symmetry. So, the filter required to have <coughs> what is called vestigial symmetry. So, 
So, the filter characteristics must be must have this vestigial symmetry. <coughs> this is the conclusion of the discussion that we had that day right in summary. So, basically what this implies is that uh, when you fold this curve back into this region the sum of these two curves this solid curve and this dotted curve turns out to be a constant value. Okay. Think about that this is fairly obvious. Now, if you were to go back to our issue of representation right this so far we, we, we have talked about how to design the vestigial sideband filtering filter at the receive at the transmitter so that message is perfectly recoverable. Now, let us look at the issue of representation of the VSP signal. Right? Yes, please. Not the advantage, it is a requirement. It is not that we, we are seeking any advantage. Unless we have that vestigial symmetry, we will not be able to recover the message signal back. Right? This is a our, our entire discussion was based on how to design the filter HFF so that MT is recoverable by the coherent detector. We wanted the output V naught T of the coherent detector to equal yeah. MT, K times MT. Right? So, if you want that to happen, this condition must be satisfied. You cannot simply choose any arbitrary uh, filter with gradual ro roll off to do the VSP filtering. That is the implication. Right? You have to have a filter which has the symmetry around FC the roll off portion must exhibit that symmetry if the perfect recovery is to be made possible. So, the VS filter VSB filter has to satisfy this constraint it is not an advantage that we are talking about it is a requirement. Okay? So, please understand that. Okay. Now, like the other modulated signals that we have discussed so far the VSB signal also is a bandpass signal and we know that every bandpass signal has a quadrature representation right. So, let us say it has an in phase component S sub i t into cosine 2 pi f c t and a quadrature phase component S q t S sub q t sin 2 pi f c t right. This is a in phase component and this is a quadrature phase component which every bandpass signal must have. For the DSP SC signal S sub i t is empty right and S sub q t is 0. For the um, SSB signal single sideband signal this is empty and this is the Hilbert transform of empty right. So, the question is what are the in phase and quadrature phase components for the case of VSP signal that is what we need to understand. Okay. To proceed further let us look at the frequency domain relationship between S i f and S f right. Uh, what is the spect how can we express a spectrum of S i t in terms of the spectrum of S t ok. To do that ask yourself the question how will you recover S i t from S t we already know that you remember we discussed quadrature multiplexing and demultiplexing right. If I want the in phase component from this message signal S of t what should I do? I have to do coherent detection with respect to cosine 2 pi of c t. I must have a coherent detector with the local carrier of cosine 2 pi of c t as the in as the carrier signal multiply these two and pass the product through a low pass filter. So, if I multiply S t with cosine 2 pi of c t what is the spectrum of that signal? That will be S f minus f c plus S f plus f c right and that spectrum your part this spectrum would have <coughs> excuse me a component around the base pan and a component around 2 f c. Out of that when you do the low pass filtering what do you do? You retain only the component around the base pan. So, basically what you are saying is that the signal S i t that you will recover would have a spectrum which equals this for f 
less than the bandwidth right mod of f less than the bandwidth but equals 0 for mod of f greater than the bandwidth because you are low pass filtering it right. This has two this has two regions where it is non zero it is non zero in this region and it is non zero in the region around 2 f c the that portion is being cut off by the low pass filter and therefore, the spectrum of s i t that you have in this representation must be given by this expression. Are you all with me? Hmm? Because you can see that s i t can be obtained from s t by multiplying s t with cosine 2 pi f c t and passing the result through a low pass filter and that fact is leads us to this expression for the spectrum of s i t in terms of the spectrum of s f s t. Any questions on that? Now, you may recollect that we had uh, written an expression for <coughs> S of f as half A c times M f into H f minus F c sorry. Uh, it was uh, not this your s of f was s of f is your vsb signal how was it be, how was it being generated you are generating it by uh, first multiplying mt with cos omega ct and then passing through the vsb filter right so that that spectrum would be mf minus fc plus m f plus f c right. This is the DSPSC signal in the frequency domain and you are passing it through h of f. So, this was s of f. Now, use this result here to get an expression for s i f and we will do a similar exercise later for s q f right, but let us first complete the exercise for s i f. Are you with me? We are saying that this is the expression for the spectrum of ST, which is a VSB, VSB signal, vestigial sideband signal, right. If I use that expression here, I will get the spectrum of the in phase component of the VSB signal, right. So, this would then become SIF. Would you be able to tell me what it will be? You will have. Um, If you remember, we had also discussed what was the nature of SF minus FC plus SF plus FC, right? We had gone through one ex one this further further step when you were looking at the demodulation of VSB SA signal, and that contained four terms, obviously, because two two terms will come from here, and two terms will come from each of these two will have two terms, and therefore you get four terms, out of which only two terms were in the base pair, which is what you want. The other two terms were around 2 f c right. So, uh, if you substitute that here you get four terms two of which are in the base pen and it is th those two terms which you need to look at and those two terms if you recollect or if you have the notes in front of you would be or it is in fact obvious I will we'll just look again that it is obvious it will be a half a c m f into h of f minus f c <coughs> plus h of f plus f c. In fact, it is from this point that we derived the requirement that this should be equal to a constant right. So, this is what you will get uh, for sorry B for the spectrum of S i f. In view of the fact that this filter is anyway satisfying the constraint that this is equal to 1, this becomes half of AC times MF, right, which itself, of course, is limited to mod of F less than B because M of F is supposed to have bandwidth of B. So, I do not have to qualify this any further. So, what does it mean? What is SIT, S sub IT? What is S sub IT? 
half of AC into MT. So, once again the in phase component remains the same whether it is a DSP SC signal, whether it is the SSP signal and now whether it is a VSB signal the in phase component remains proportional to message signal MT and that is the reason you are able to recover it through coherent demodulation right and that was of course made possible because we had satisfied this constraint that this plus this must be independent of F must be a constant right. So, I think everything falls in place only thing left to consider is SQT now if you go through the same exercise once again can you tell me what will be the spectrum SQF in terms of the spectrum of ST. So, we are going back to this expression now how will you ok the, again the answer to this question would be how do we recover SQT from ST and that that will give us a, a relationship in the frequency domain also. How will you recover it you multiply this with <coughs> sin 2 pi FCT right and pass the results with low pass filter right. So, what will be the spectrum of ST sin 2 pi FCT that is what you have to really see. So, it will be now instead of SF plus FC uh, SF minus FC plus SF plus FC it will be J times S of F minus FC minus S of F plus FC. Just remember what is sin 2 pi FCT it is e to the power J 2 pi FCT minus e to the power minus J 2 pi FCT divided by 2 2 J right use that result use the frequency translation theorem of the Fourier transform and this is what you get right straightforward right. So, this is of course, this will be the result again as you know when you do this uh, when you when you pass ST when you multiply ST with sin 2 pi FCT you will get two, two terms one around base band and the other around 2 FC. So, we have to low pass filter the result right. So, we are only looking at the portion of the spectrum this spectrum for mod of F less than B once again because outside this it has to be 0 because of low pass filtering right S Q 2 S, S sub Q T is also a low pass signal. So, this if you follow the same analogy again substitute for S of F right and go through that you get J by 2 A sub C M of F what will be the difference instead of this plus this you will get this minus this right everything else remaining the same. Okay, that is what you will get. Now, how do you interpret this result? Hmm? The interpretation of this result is that the low pass signal S sub Q T, which forms the quadrature phase component of the VSB signal, right, can be obtained from the message signal MT by passing the message signal MT through a filter whose transfer function is this right you are, you are multiplying the spectrum of MT with this transfer function. So, that means this signal S sub Q T is obtained by passing the message signal MT through a filter with this transfer function right. So, S sub Q T can be therefore considered as obtained by passing the original message signal M T through a filter with transfer function let us say H sub Q F where H sub Q F is J times H of F minus F C minus H of F plus F C 
let us call this signal empty convolved with or pass through h q f as m prime t <coughs> right. Let us say the result that which we are so far calling s sub q t I am giving a new name to it which is I am calling m prime t right. Then basically what we are saying is that the V S B signal I think I have slightly changed my notation this time we had been using x of t so far and suddenly I have shifted to s of t I hope you do not mind that I, I did not realize while I made this change. So, your V S P signal therefore, can be thought of as half of A C times M T times cosine 2 pi F C T minus half of A C M prime T sin 2 pi F C T where M prime T is obtained like this ok. So, it has some similarities with what is done in the SSB case. What was in the SSB case? This was M hat t, the Hilbert transform. So, we are passing M t through a special filter called the Hilbert transformer. <coughs> Instead of passing it through a Hilbert transformer, we are passing it through something very similar, but it is not exactly a Hilbert transformer, right. It is something slightly different from that. To appreciate what is the difference, let us look at the transfer function h q f a little more carefully, right. But before I discuss that, it, this also gives you an alternative method for generating VSP signal, VSB signals, right. Just like the phasing method for SSB, you can have a phasing method for the VSP, right. What will be the uh, block diagram? You will have the message signal empty coming in, the in phase part will be obtained by simply multiplying with cosine 2 pi f c t and the quadrature phase part before we multiply the sin 2 pi f c t you will pass it through this filter h q f right and then multiply this with sin 2 pi f c t the quadrature carrier and simply add the two or subtract the two depending on which sideband you want to transmit fully and which one partially right. So, that is your and the det detection or the demodulation can be done coherently ok. Let us just spend a few minutes now on discussing the nature of h q f what does it look like. Let us first recollect or let us as we as we notice this discussion that I have had is valid for S S B as well right because SSB does satisfy this requirement, the, fil the SSB filter, this this filter, th this condition is satisfied that this plus this is equal to 1, because this portion is 0 and this portion is 1, something like that, right. And therefore, that condition is satisfied. So, this whole thing as to what H f minus, uh, uh, th should this whole thing should be applicable also to SSB signals. So, therefore, let us first look at the nature of H q f for SSP signals right. For SSP signal what what is your transfer function? It is like this basically what we hope to see what, what do we hope to see that if we derive h q f from h of f from this condition that we have just discussed we must get the Hilbert transformer because we know that that is how the quadrature component of SSP is generated through Hilbert transformation of MT right. So, H q f should turn out to be the Hilbert transformer let us see whether it does right. This is your H of f centered around I mean this is the high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of f sub c. Now let us look at this filter j times let us let me plot j times h q f or uh, h 1 by j times h q f 
or HQF divided by G. Because if you recollect, if you look at this expression, HQF is this. So, I am taking J on the left hand side and plotting H, HQF upon J, right. That that is equal to HF minus FC minus HF plus FC, okay. So, HQF HF minus FC takes you shifts this to the right to this point. So, you get this right. Of course, this portion will go around 2 FC we are not interested in that right. We are only interested in the portion in the low pass region right. HF plus FC will shift this portion to the left. right and you are taking a difference of these two. So, here you will get plus 1 and here you will get minus 1 right. So, you get your signal function back right. So, H Q F upon J is equal to signal minus signal. So, basically what you get is H Q F upon J is equal to minus signal of F right and that is precisely what the Hilbert transformer is H sub Q F is equal to minus J times sigma F which is the Hilbert transformer. So, as expected this theory leads us to a filter H Q F which is nothing but the Hilbert transformer for the case of SSP right. For the VSP the filter would be slightly different that is about all. Let us look at what the what the filter will be in this case. This is the VSB filter F c this goes let us say to F c minus beta this is minus F c and this comes to F minus F c plus, plus beta right. This is the VSB filter right. Now, let us apply this result there and plot once again 1 by j times h q h sub q f. <coughs> when you shift this to the right what you will get is something like that right. When you shift this to the left you will get something like that. When you subtract the 2 right this is coming from H f minus F c, this is coming from H f plus F c by looking only the translation towards the base pen. Of course, each of these components also gets translated to 2 F c which we are not looking at. So, now if you subtract the 2 the filter that you will see is going to have this kind of characteristic. So, this is 1 by j h q f right. I have not plotted this very nicely, but it will be symmetrical as it should be right and it will have this kind of characteristic. We are subtracting from this. So, at this point what will you get? Half minus half which is 0 it is passing through the origin right and then of course, at this point you get a, a gradual decrease towards 0 and at this point you become more and more negative right till you become minus 1. So, this is plus 1 here minus 1 here and between minus beta to plus beta there is a gradual roll off. So, H Q F is J times this right. So, it is not exactly a signal function anymore. That is the only difference, but it is very similar to that is that in the limit as beta tends to 0 this will reduce to the signal function ok. 
are you with me? So, then let us try to wind up the discussion on vestigial sideband modulation. In vestigial sideband modulation, therefore, what we have learnt is A, we will use slightly more bandwidth than the bandwidth of an SSP signal, right. The amount that you would like to use more will depend on the kind of flexibility you want in your filter design, right. The value of beta that you use is a design parameter. You could choose it to be a small value, you could choose it to be a large value, depends on how easy it is to realize the filter that you want, right or how much cost you are ready to incur for designing the for, for making the filter, right because uh, whether you want a less complex filter or a more complex filter, right. If you want a gradual roll off you can make it a less complex filter, only thing is the cost will be in terms of a larger value of beta that means a slightly poorer bandwidth efficiency, right. But if you pay this cost the advantages will be that you can save considerable amount of bandwidth still for large bandwidth signals like picture signals which have rich low frequency content and VSB as we learned as we discussed last time is particularly relevant to those signals which have a very large amount of low frequency content and therefore you cannot tolerate any distortion in the low frequency region particularly phase distortion which is likely to happen when you design a sharp cutoff filter and then the phase characteristics at the at, at the point of cutoff will typically be highly nonlinear, which would be very very undesirable, particularly for signals like picture signals and fact signals. Okay, so in a nutshell, that summarizes our uh, discussion on VSP. So therefore, now you can imagine uh, for TV transmission, hmm, this would be a natural choice when you're transmitting pictures. <coughs> Right. We will discuss TV transmission later, but you can keep this in mind right. That vestigial sideband signals would be particularly the right kind of modulation to use for TV transmission, TV picture transmission. In fact, that is the case. So, uh, picture transmission in television actually uses vestigial sideband modulation right. Because you have a very large bandwidth signal there, if you do not cut off one of the sidebands, you will occupy too much bandwidth. 5 megahertz will imply 10 megahertz bandwidth around the carrier right which is a very very large amount of bandwidth so to save that bandwidth and still not have these problems that are discussed you decide to go for vsp because you can't go for ssp in this case okay we'll return to this point when we discuss tv transmission any questions Any questions? None? Everything is clear? Good. Let us hope it is really clear. No, no. M prime T is not the Hilbert transform of M T. No, neither M prime F. Please, I think you have not understood what I have said then. No, no, only for the case of SSB. I will just prove to you that for the case of SSB, this theory that I have developed is consistent with what we discussed earlier. That is all I said, okay. Whatever theory we have developed for the general sideband filtering is consistent with what we have learned for the case of SSB signal because this filter HQF then reduces to the Hilbert transformer, but in general it is this kind of a filter right which is not a Hilbert transformer <coughs> sorry yes the, the roll off that you will have will depend on the value of beta right. If the value of beta becomes 0 you get the si single sideband case back and it reduces to the Hilbert transformer Sir? yes please. Neither in SSP nor in VSP. Sir, and still, uh, and uh, we, we still need a coherent detector. Yes. Why don't we go for DSP with polarizing multiplexing for better signals? Um, we will discuss that later. It is a good question, um, but, the, but, but the answer is that actually we do not, we do not, we cannot tolerate any phase incoherence in quadrature multiplexing, not even one bit. 
there will be a cross talk if there is even a small, a small amount of either frequency difference or phase difference which you do not like which you would not like to have. Whereas, in the case of SSP and VSP if you remember I have a second method of demodulation in which I add a carrier locally and do then do envelope detection which is much less sensitive to these problems than the coherent detector is and I will be able to do the same thing for, v, for VSP. One method of demodulating the VSP signals would be precisely the second method that we discussed for the SSP signal that is the carrier reinsertion method. We look at that. In fact, the theory is exactly the same, there is no difference except that m hat t m hat t gets replaced with m prime t, right. So, we have a second method and that is it is it is the existence of the second method which makes VSB and SSB more acceptable than QM. I hope you have answered your question. Any other questions? Okay. Let us proceed further then. Now, I am going to slightly change the topic here. It is we are on the subject of broad subject of amplitude modulation and its uh, applications, but now we are coming to some practical aspects. And before that, uh, one of the practical aspects that we need to discuss is uh, the kind of receivers that we need to use. Of course, we have discussed the structure of the demodulator, right. For, for example, if you are doing AM transmission, we know what uh, what we are going to use. We are use, going to use an envelope detector, right. And we can use the envelope detector also for the case of SSP and uh, VSB with carrier reinsertion. But at the moment, let us let us concentrate on the amplitude modulation aspect because that is a one of the most commonly used analog modulations, amplitude modulation with carrier because of the simplicity of the detector. But as uh, as many of you asked me at the time of uh, this discussion what will happen if I want to trans if I want to receive different signals right. Because when you when you are looking in when you are having a broadcast receiver you do not want to listen to only a signal at one carrier frequency. There are so many different broadcasting stations each operating at a different frequency right and you want to be able to tune into any one of them right. What are the issues concerned with that kind of a receiver? So, we are now looking at rather than just the detector we want to look at the receiver as a whole right as to what all features the receiver should have. So, that it is possible for me uh, to have detection of a signal of my choice from amongst multiple signals that may be available from the broadcasting areas around you right. So, to do the, do the discussion I first want to digress into with a uh, slight generalization of our previous discussion on frequency translation and mixing. These are not new terms we have already discussed this. There is one issue which I want to discuss before I come back to the receiver. Now, the term frequency translation so far we have been using it in the context of going from baseband to a band pass signal or from a band pass signal to a low pass signal right. But actually in communication application the term frequency translation and mixing are used in a much wider context. Typically we sometimes in, in fact it is quite often that we need to go from one frequency to another frequency right? not necessarily from baseband to some FC and, and back right. Arbitrarily uh, we may want to go from bandpass signal at center at one frequency to a bandpass signal center at another frequency right. So, let me start with that it is desirable in many applications to translate and by translate I mean frequency translate a bandpass signal to a new center frequency. And this the mechanism is the same mechanism is multiplying the bandpass signal that you want to translate by a suitable carrier signal by a suitable carrier signal which could be sinusoid or cosine side or a corresponding periodic signal 
and appropriate filtering, multiplying and appropriate filtering. Right? And this process of multiplying and appropriate filtering is what we call mixing and if you remember I had introduced some other names also for this converting right and heterodyning. Mixing, converting, heterodyning these are names which are used interchangeably. So, what we are saying is you have a bandpass signal let us say m t cos sin omega 1 t for the sake of simplicity I am taking only the in phase component, but you could take a general bandpass signal with a general representation right without any um, loss of discussion with lo lo without any loss of generality. So, I have taken a bandpass signal which is centered around m t cos sin omega 1 t where is it centered omega 1 right the center frequency is omega 1. <coughs> Let us say I want to translate this to a center frequency of omega 2 what should I do? Hmm? I should have a local oscillator what should be the frequency of this local oscillator? Hmm? Omega 1 either omega 1 minus omega 2 or omega 1 plus omega 2 any one of the two will be fine right. Right. So, I take a local oscillator with a, with a frequency of either omega 1 plus omega 2 or omega 1 minus omega 2 and then when I multiply these two I will get a sum frequency component and a difference frequency component right. The sum frequency component will be at frequency 2 omega 1 cent will be centered around 2 omega 1 plus <coughs> minus omega 2 right which let us assume is much uh, quite large and can be removed by appropriate filter but the component that we want is centered around omega 2. So, what kind of filter we need here? Not a low pass filter a band pass filter with center frequency of omega 2 right and that will lead to your m t cosine omega 2 t. As an exercise please check up that if instead of m t cosine omega 1 t I had taken the more general representation of the band pass signal right that is m t cosine omega 1 t uh, let us say some in phase component and some quadrature phase component <coughs> and do this process we will still get the translation intact right I will leave that as an exercise. So, uh, this signal at this point basically the theory is that if you look at this signal E t this you can write as m t cosine omega 2 t plus m t cosine 2 omega 1 plus minus omega 2 t through the trigonometric identities right and through the band pass filtering you are eliminating this component. Retaining only this to get this output. So, this process in general is called mixing. Now, there is a very common problem that happens in this process that one encounters in this process right. It is a common problem in all mixing all mixers of this kind it is associated with all mixers of this kind. Suppose, you take omega 1 plus omega 2 t here right and let us say at the input along with this signal I also have a signal at frequency omega 1 <coughs> plus 2 omega 2 t ok. So, along with this I have another signal which is centered around omega 1 plus 2 omega 2 t. Now, what will be the output of this system? Have you understood the question? The question is if at the input to the same system which is adjusted to receive a signal of frequency omega 1 that is adjusted to translate the signal of frequency omega 1 to omega 2. If at the input to the system I have a signal m omega 1 plus 2 omega 2 what will be the output? Think carefully 
see basically what you have to look, look at the some frequency argument what will be the frequency components that you will have here omega 1 plus 2 omega 2 minus omega 1 plus omega 2 and of course the sum component the sum component we do not have to worry about and what is this equal to omega 2 again. So, this will also be passed by this band pass filter right. So, for every frequency that it is supposed to translate there is also what is called an image frequency which it will translate to the same frequency. Not only it will translate omega 1 to omega 2 it will also translate omega 1 plus 2 omega 2 to omega 2 right. So, omega 1 plus 2 omega 2 that frequency is said to be the image frequency of omega 1 ok. So, basically let me if you have not understood let me repeat it what we are saying is there is a common problem with mixers and I want to elaborate on this problem and this problem is as following that inputs of the form k t cos sin omega 1 plus minus 2 omega 2 it had uh, here I had taken the mixer frequency uh, the local oscillator frequency to be omega 1 plus omega 2. If I had taken omega 1 minus omega 2 then the image frequency would have been omega 1 minus 2 omega 2 right basically the sign would be the same. So, inputs of the form k in k t cos omega 1 plus minus 2 omega 2 t are also translated to can you complete the sentence to a center frequency of omega 2. To see this let us go through the trigonometry what we are saying is 2 <coughs> co cosine 2 k t cosine omega 1 plus minus 2 omega 2 t when you multiply this with so k t cosine omega 1 plus minus 2 omega 2 t when you multiply that with 2 cosine what are you multiplying with what is your local oscillator frequency either omega 1 plus omega 2 or omega 1 minus omega 2 right. This leads to 2 components one which is a difference frequency component and the other which is the sum frequency component. Right? And this will again show up at the output of the same band pass filter this will get eliminated right. This is the point I was making. So, when you use a local oscillator of this frequency basically what you are saying is omega 1 will go to omega 2 omega 1 plus minus omega 2 will also go to omega 2 right. So, this sorry this will be 2 omega 2 right omega 1 plus and of course, the sign will be same more precisely if L o is omega 1 plus omega 2 the image frequency will be omega 1 plus 2 omega 2. If your L o is omega 1 minus omega 2 your image frequency would be actually this is a misnomer I should not use I f, I f is typically used to denote something else, but let me for the moment use that this will be omega 1 sorry minus 2 omega 2 right. And therefore, if both the signals were simultaneously present the signal at omega 1 and the signal at omega 1 plus 2 omega 2 and we have used a lo local oscillator of this frequency the band pass filter output will contain components corresponding to both of them right and there will be a cross talk you will get sum of two signals is that clear right. So, that is a problem that you need to keep in mind when you are working with mixers that there is a concept of an image frequency which has a potential to interfere with the frequency of interest right. The, the image frequency if a signal at that frequency is present will interfere 
with the signal of interest which is at frequency omega 1. Is that clear? Basically that is the point that I want to convey. Now keep that in mind and now we shall discuss uh, okay. So we will discuss next time the concept of a superheterodyne receiver. Thank you very much.